Alrighty, guys, let me just refresh this other side over here. Somewhere around there. Let's see if we can get things rolling here. Fair and square and without any hair. Oh, it's not. All right. All right, so uh, we've got a lot to talk about here. This is going to be a teaching tutorial game for Dynasty League Baseball. So, yeah, I uh, just ordered. Um, I came across a fellow that was selling some of his Dynasty League baseball cards. It's a game I've been wanting to get into, but uh, it's kind of expensive. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but... I was able to uh, purchase some seasons off of him, uh, seven seasons as a matter of fact, and uh, so I wanted to cover it. It is very familiar if you've been watching our talk about uh, Internet Baseball League because they're based, both, based, both of them, Internet Baseball League and Dynasty League Baseball, are based upon the old Pursue the Pennant system. So a lot of what we talk about in this uh, system is going to refer back to uh, Internet Baseball League and vice versa. Obviously, they do things slightly different, though. They're not exactly the same, but they're very similar in, in their approach to the to the game. Uh, if you roll 0 to 499, you're going to come off the batter's card. 500 to 999, it's going to come off the pitcher's card. And then they have the lefty-righty splits and etc. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but... Uh, if you're looking for Dynasty League, as I mentioned, it is kind of expensive to get into. Uh, recent seasons, like 2004 and above, I think are around $69 per season file. Uh, and uh, that includes about 25 to 30-ish players per team. So you're not getting like a lot of the fringe players. Uh, you're just getting the main players that played on the team during the season. Uh, not only do you have to purchase that, but you also have to purchase the, uh, see if I can pull them over here. You got ballpark charts uh, for each of the different seasons as well. So uh, you're gonna need to purchase these. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say you have to purchase for every single season. Because there's not, you know, the the stadiums don't change that much, but it's a good addition. But this is an extra, I think, fifteen dollars for these. You do need to purchase the uh, rule book and the charts, uh, which come with uh, weather charts and then a little little six-page uh, rule book, not rule book, but a chart book. Uh, I think this is like fifteen dollars as well. Uh, and uh, so it can, you know, it can add up to a little bit of a cost. So I ended up, like I said, found a fellow that was selling some of his in, uh, his uh, Dynasty League cards. Uh, and uh, so I ended up buying all seven seasons of him, from him. He gave me a pretty good deal on him. And so um, I'm going to be playing a lot of Dynasty League now on my channel. So I wanted to... I know a lot of people are a little unfamiliar with this system, so we're going to cover it and kind of go over it. So, uh, so some of the seasons I bought from the fell were already opened, and some of them weren't. And uh, you can see here, uh, they basically, uh, the older version cards, the older version cards came in these sheets like this, and perf perforated uh, cards in, on cardstock paper. Uh, and that's uh, kind of how they came in the beginning. Uh, and then you would, uh, you know, kind of punch out your cards uh, out of the perf uh, out of the perforated uh, edges like this. This is the uh, 71 season, so you can still order. Uh, I'm assuming you can still order these. But they also uh, are now coming in already pre-cut uh, format as well. This is the 1957 season, so you can see you're not getting a lot of players for the 1957 season. Now some of the older seasons, they run, they range uh, forty-nine dollars, I think around forty-nine dollars. Uh, the seventies and eighties run around fifty-nine dollars, and like I said, the two thousands and recent, 
cost you around $69. So they can be kind of expensive um, for what you're getting. Uh, of course, they are color, you know, color guarded. So there is a difference in the, the format. Um, I think they switched over to this and, and are getting away from the perforated sheets. They're going more to these already pre-cut cards. Um, so you can see here's the uh, six, uh, 57 season. It's about this once. And then I have, uh, I have the 67 season. And you can see it's, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than the 57 season, but not a whole heck of a lot bigger. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many cards are in each one, one of these sets. Like I said, you only get about 25 to maybe 30 players per team. There's not a lot, to be honest. Um, I got the 2004 season, and, uh, you know, we got the New York Yankees and the New York Mets out. And uh, so here's all, you know, we have the batters out and the pitchers. So that's 10 cards. This is all we have left. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So there's 28 cards for the Yankees in 2004. Again, you're not going to get a lot of the fringe players, you know, players that didn't bat more than maybe 30, 40 at bats or more. Um, you know, pitchers need to have probably, I don't know what the cutoff is, maybe 30 or 40 innings pitched. Because you're only, you know, you're only getting 27 cards. For the uh, Mets, again, we got nine on the table. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So we do have 33 for the Mets, a little bit more. They must have had a lot more kind of, uh, you know, mid-range players that came in and played for the season. Uh, how many per team are in 1967 or 1957? I don't, I don't know that. Uh, and, of course, you know, this is about how many, sh I don't know how many sheets are in here, but this is the 71 season, so you can kind of gauge you know, cost value versus what you're, you know, what you're getting. I will say I, I am on their emailing list and I've been watching. Uh, and they do have specials where you buy two seasons and you get one free. So, you know, you're basically paying, you're getting, you know, 30, 33% off on a season file. Um, so, but it can still, you know, for those three seasons, plus, like I said, you got the, uh, the charts, you know, uh, like I said, these are $15 a piece. It comes with like four or five pages of charts for each season uh, for the ballparks. And then, of course, you got your rules charts, which are, you know, I think they're like 20 or some dollars for just the rule, for the uh, rule charts, uh, the weather charts and, you know, your little booklet there. Um, so it can, it can add up pretty quickly uh, when you start looking at it. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the other reasons <laughs> I haven't ordered it from online, like I said, is, you know, they run the two-for-one specials. So I think, oh, okay, well, you know, I can get a couple of seasons, a couple a couple of the ballpark cards and the, and the rules, and, and it'd be about 150 bucks or so. But then, <laughs> then they also charge you tax if you live in Florida, because the company is actually here in Florida, they're on the East Coast, uh, directly, almost directly across from me on the East Coast from where I live. I could take uh, 70 all the way out there and get over there in a couple hours uh, to pick up my order, I think. But so I'm like, oh, I have to pay an extra $15. And then, of course, you're paying for shipping and stuff. So I was really happy to find somebody that was selling their cards. Um, you know, one of the issues they've always had is the little text we're going to talk about and show you that here in just a few minutes. Uh, a lot of players complained about the text being very, very small. A lot of us older gentlemen don't have the greatest uh, vision. Uh, so they do come with, they're starting to create newer, bigger text cards as well. And so the guy that I bought these from, they're actually switching over to the bigger cards. They are, of course, more money because they're bigger cards. So I'm not sure the cost on these. They just say to call for a price on them. So I don't know how much more they are. 
Um, like I said, it's it's a pretty good investment. Is the system any good? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to be playing a lot of payoff uh, payoff pits. We're going to be playing a lot of uh, Dynasty League here. I spent a lot of money on all these season cards, so I'm going to be coming up with some projects to use them. And uh, this is, I got the 2004 season. I got the 1957, the 67, the 71, the 72, the 74. Let's see, how many is that? 2004, 71, 72, 74, um, 67, 57, and there's one other one. What do I got? Uh, uh, let me roll over here and see what I got. <laughs> uh 71 72 what's this over here uh 75 okay so i got a lot of 1970 cards uh 71 72 74 75 and like i said um you know this is kind of the way they were coming with the perforated sheets which i'm not a big fan of never have been um but like I said, I think they're switching over to the already pre-cut cards now. I think they, I don't know if you can still get them in the perforated sheets like that, or if you have to order these special or whatever the situation is, but there is different kinds. All right, so let's look at the, um, the game and the system and uh, give you guys an idea of uh, what it's like. All right, so uh, I guess we'll just uh, look at uh, a card here, give you guys a... Uh, a tour of the Dynasty League cards. Obviously, the team name, the player name, and the season, obviously. And then, all, of course, all of their player stats are up here in the top right-hand corner, so you can quickly reference what they did in real life. Uh, then they have um, whether they bat left-handed, right-handed, or both. And then it'll tell you whether they're a spray hitter or a pull hitter, and that'll be important on a lot of the charts we look at. Uh, situations, we're going to talk about that here in a second because that's very important in this system. There are situations, um, but we'll look at that here in a minute. Then you have your bunting and hit and run rating, your base running ability. Your uh, This is kind of interesting. You have your lead to steal for second base, steal third base, and steal home. So you might have a player like, for example, uh, if we look at, uh, say, uh, Let's see here. How did how did I mess this up already? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll look at uh, Jose Reyes here. So Jose Reyes, you can see to steal second base, uh, he gets uh, a lead rating of two, but to steal third base, he's got a lead rating of three. So um, you know he's got a better chance of stealing third. Oh, he's getting a good lead. And then of course you have your steal rating to steal second, to steal third, and to steal home. So obviously these are going to all come into play pretty interesting. Uh, intangibles, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you get a little rating there. And then your durability and use rating, how long you have to rest and blah, blah, blah. The different positions that the player has played. And then their range rating, which goes from D all the way to A+. Plus. A plus being the best, D being the worst. Then you have your error rating, which is in increments of five and it goes from zero up to 100. Then you have your throw rating. Uh, in this case, he's a second baseman, so he doesn't have a throw rating. Actually, that's not true. Uh, second baseman in shortstops would have a throw rating when they're turning the pivot on a double play. They'll either be a minus five or a plus five, or they'll be neutral. In this case, Reyes is neutral because he doesn't have a rating there. Uh, then you have a D, a P, and an H. Uh, I think these are more for the catchers uh, on pass balls. Um, yeah, what was the uh, H result is for something else. All right, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Of course, you have the uh, lefty-righty split. So if you're up against a right-handed pitcher, you're going to use the right-hand side. If you're up against a left-handed pitcher, you're going to be using the left-handed side. Sorry, I'm moving around so much. All right, so we talked about situations. So there's nine different situations in the game that you can have, and sometimes you'll have a result on the card, and there'll be different 
uh, plays based upon your different situations. So you have your normal, which is basically just a blue, which it's hard to tell, but it, all of this has got like a light blue background. Then you have your clutch rating, which uh, if your player is clutch, in clutch situations, you're going to use the orange as opposed to whatever the other outcome is. Tired, this is mostly for pitchers uh, when they're tired. Jam is the opposite. It's a pitcher's ability to get out of a jam. Uh, then you have, what is the blue one? The blue one's kind of hard to read to get. Oh, in. So uh, if, the, if the defenders are playing in, you're going to use that blue section as opposed to, you know, um, the regular result if the players are playing in. Uh, then you have hit and run, which is pink. So in a hit and run situation, you're going to use the pink result. Uh, then you have the on, which is, oh, let me refresh my memory what the on represents. The on, oh, that means uh, if, the, uh, if there's runners on base, uh, it's basically the uh, ability of the pitcher to uh, get through uh, with, you know, not allowing extra runs because there's extra runners on base. Off is your, uh, oh, um, lead off man. So it's, um, if your pitcher has an off rating, he doesn't give a lot of walks to the lead off uh, man each, uh, each um, start of the inning. And then there's a special gray one, which is for durability use. So, uh, you can see a lot of the regular columns, you're just going to get one result, but like in this case, if it's 101 to 105, it'd be a foul ball, except for if in the clutch situation, that'd be a, sec a double off the wall in the right field, etc. So, uh, and then if you have multiple lines that have multiple situations, uh, the one that is all the way to the left takes precedent over anything else. So, uh, the deep fly would be um, come into play, except for, and there's an exception to that rule, and that is hit and run override everything. So hit and run would be the number one rated, and if there's uh, anything else, it's always the one to the left. Hey, Rob, how you doing, buddy? So that's kind of the cards. Uh, you can see a little bit more, actually, on the pitcher's card because they have, uh, they have a lot more say in the jam and the on and the off abilities. But these situations only come into play when your pitcher or your batter has that situation on. So you can see here in Steve Traxel in 2004, his situation, and you can have multiples, his only situation is jam. So if, if he's in a jam situation, um, we would use the jam result unless he's up against someone that's clutch. Clutch and jam are kind of the opposite of one another. So if you have a jam and a clutch, they kind of nullify one another. And uh, these these cards look wild. And is this a new game to you? Yes, this is my first game of Dynasty League uh, on my channel here. Just got these cards today. Uh, so, yep, uh, so in this situation, jam, uh, so basically what a jam situation is, is there's two outs and a runner in scoring position or once the seventh inning hits, if you have the t uh, tying run or the lead runner at the plate, then that is considered a jam situation. So you would use the, use the jam results and the jam is kind of a like a pink. So instead of a deep drive, he would get a foul ball if he was in a jam there. Uh, actually, no, that's not right. It's orange. Sometimes the colors, the colors can be a little confusing. So the jam situation, oh, I can bring it over here so you guys can see. So the jam is kind of an orange. So uh, if 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 Steve Tracker was in a jam, uh, then we wouldn't look at the umpire. We wouldn't look at the walk. We would go to the strikeout result. Uh, down here, instead of a line drive to first base or I'm sorry, a line drive single into center field, and instead it would be a strikeout. So his ability to get out of a jam. Uh, obviously you need the, 
the quality to do to actually get that situation. If we look at the starting pitcher for the New York Yankees here, Mike Messina, you notice in the situations he's blank, so he has nothing. So you don't have to worry about jams. You don't have to worry about on or off or anything like that because he doesn't have any situations. Uh, but, of course, that can be bad because if you run into a hitter that has, um, like, uh, let's look at this guy here. Gary Sheffield has a clutch situation. So in clutch hitting situations, if he's not going up against a pitcher that has the jam, then he's going to get the advantage against that pitcher. Obviously, that only comes into situation uh, when you roll that on the actual card. So we'll see that when we actually uh, get to play the game. Uh, so uh, for your pitchers, it's kind of the same situation. Over in the top right-hand corner is his stats. In the middle is all of his range, error, bulk, wild pitch, bunding, his age, and his endurance. This is how many batters he can go. He can go 30 batters. And then once he hits 30 batters, uh, he can continue to pitch until he um, until he gives up two more hits or walks. Once he gives up two more two more men reach base, other than an intentional walk, then uh, once he does that, then he will be tired. So the tired is this yellow. So you would use the yellow result. So instead of an umpire, he would walk the guy. Instead of a soft ground out, he would give up a, a single to center field. So you can see the yellow ones there. All right, so you got to obviously monitor your uh, endurance, your pickoff, and then your hold rating. So for Steve Traxel, he's a two on a pickoff. His hold rating is C+. Plus. And then uh, his number there is a zero, but this would be plus or minus to the base stealing ability of the runner there. Uh, the situation, again, he's a jam situation. Uh, and then this is his batting card. He's a right spray hitter and he uses card number six and he's F power. Uh, base running and stealing ability and then his intangibles and of course, lefty righty splits uh, and you can see batting average against him versus left-handers is 245 and against right-handed batters it was 279 which is kind of nice to have that up there because you can quickly look at your pitchers to see you know if you got a left-handed batter up what their chance of getting a hit off of certain you know when they bring in a pitcher you can just look at that number right there and it'll kind of give you uh, you know kind of a clue as to how many uh, hits are on that card for the lefty or for the right-hander. So, and you also get his blood types as wrong. <laughs> I think his blood types on the back of the card somewhere. No. Um, so yeah, it is a more in-depth system. Uh, there are, as we talked about, there are charts here. You know, this is just the error chart page. You can see it looks like a, uh, you know, like a. Rubik's Cube matrix of numbers on here. Uh, so you got uh, you got that. You got your base runner advancements. You got your bunch chart, your foul territory chart. You got your bizarre play charts. You got your steal attempt or your attempt chart and then your steal chart. And then your result charts on soft ground balls, uh, regular ground balls and hard ground balls. And then your range plays for the infield and the outfield. I'm sure we're going to look at that when we get to play, which won't be too much longer. Uh, of course, just like uh, Internet Baseball League, there's weather charts. You're going to be rolling on the weather chart because that's going to adjust things for you. And uh, so we're going to do that. And each different area has their own specific chart. If we look for Shea Stadium, there's Shea Stadium. So Shea Stadium, we're going to roll for Shea Stadium, wind direction and speed. And I'm going to show you how that comes into play here in just a second. So let's, uh, we're going to roll three 10-sided dice, again, just like uh, Internet Baseball League. And they're red, red, white, and blue. If you just need two dice, right, if you just roll, need two dice, you look at the white and the blue. And if you need just a single dice, you're going to look at the red one. And sometimes you'll need a single dice and a percentile dice. So if I was to roll these, 
right? The single dice would be a six, and the percentile would be a 98. So that's how you read the dice. Um, in this case, a lot of rolls on the charts are just percentile, so we won't need the red dice. But we're going to roll for weather here at Shea, beautiful Shea Stadium. And that is to uh, my good friend out there, Combat Painter, who he always says that. I love it in his games when he says, oh, beautiful Shea Stadium. We're here at uh, downtown Flushing Meadows in the Bronx, or wherever it is, and beautiful Shea Stadium. <laughs> so we're going to roll for the weather. And I hit the uh, camera. That was super cool. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, it's a 1 and a 0. So we rolled a 10. So we're going to look. And this game is played in July 2014. July 2nd. I'm sorry. July. Yes. July 2nd, 2014. So it's a light wind, 0 to 9 miles an hour in July. So 0 to 51. So just a very light, light breeze, which is good because it's not going to adjust anything. All right. So we talked about the uh, charts and everything you get uh, that you order. Each of the different seasons has a hit distance and your power rating for your different, uh, you know, you're going to roll to find out how, you know, how far of a distance is going to go. But that can be adjusted wind direction and it can also be directed, uh, it can be adjusted by the wind speed. But you notice we're at wind speed zero to nine. So we got no adjustments whatsoever, which is nice because we don't have to worry about that. But if you had, say, 10 to 19 miles an hour wind, uh, you're going to get adjustments uh, based on the column for the wind speed and also the temperature. So uh, we have not seen here. Let's see here. That's the wind speed. Hmm. All right, and we are now going to roll for the temperature. Temperatures and precipitation here. So we're going to roll again on the chart. Or, yeah, we're going to roll on the chart here, and that is a 91. Uh-oh. That could mean something. We're in July, and this is a, let me see, is this a day game or a night game? Let's find out. Let me look at the actual. It was Friday, July 2nd, 2004. Start time was 7.52 p.m., so it's going to be a night game in beautiful Shea Stadium. 55,068 in attendance. 55,068 in attendance. So we rolled a, uh, what did we roll? We rolled a 90, 91. So it's a night game in July, and 91, uh, that's actually in the Pacific Northwest, though. I want, I don't want the Pacific Northwest. I want, here's the wind speed. I must be missing it somewhere. Why am I missing it? That's a good question. Arizona. Let's see. Is it on chart three, possibly? Mid-Atlantic, Georgia. Ohio Valley. Texas, Missouri, Great Lakes region. California, Colorado. Hmm. It's got to be here, and I'm just missing it because I'm a dummy, but New England is just Boston, Montreal. Fenway Park. Camden Yards. It's like it's continuing from page three, so let's look at page three. Okay, here we go. Mid-Atlantic region, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, and Brooklyn. Okay, so it's July. It's a night game. We rolled 93, so it's 50 degrees. Uh, it's a little cloudy and a little bit of uh, 91. Sorry, it's 50 and partly cloudy, uh, which, again, can come into play when you're looking at your temperatures and how far the ball actually moves. 
So with uh, in the 50 degrees, actually, is that what I said? 50? Night game in July and 50s. Yep. So it's in the 50s. It's a cold evening here in Shea. Beautiful Shea. So it's minus five on your distance to uh, your home run checks. So if you hit it 360 feet, it's only going to go 355 feet, which can make a big difference. If we look at beautiful Shea Stadium, here is beautiful Shea Stadium, and each ballpark has their own information on it. And it tells you, uh, so this is going to be a grass surface and okay quality. And uh, the seven different positions in left field down the line is 355 feet. Left center field is 370. Uh, left field, center field, center left field, I'm not sure what you would call this. It's 385 feet. Dead center, 425 Right center field is 385. Right right field is 370. And right field down the line is 355. Visibility is poor. That will come into play in some of the different checks. The foul territory is large. And the how the ball uh, carries is a minus 5. So minus 5 because of the ballpark and the carry. And we get a minus 5 because it's 50 degrees. So when you go to hit a home run... You're going to lose 10 feet of distance. So, you know, let's just say we have a C Raider, a C Power guy up at the bait, uh, up at the plate, and he's rolling to see if he gets a home run. Right? He's going to roll percentile. He rolls a 0 8, which is really crappy. So, C and 0 8 is going to give him 280 feet. Well, we're going to subtract 10 feet to that. So it's down to 270 feet. So obviously, you want to roll really, really high so you get more distance on that. Uh, 12. So 12 in the C is going to be 285 feet. So again, we're going to subtract 10 feet from that. Uh, so that's how that all works. And of course, you're going to find your location of where you go to hit the home run based upon if you're a left pole hitter or left spray hitter or right spray hitter or right pole hitter. So we'll show you all that when it comes into play, but we're in beautiful Shea Stadium. Again, that is in reference to my good friend, Combat Painter. If you're not a uh, subscriber to Combat Painter's channel, be sure to do that. He does a lot of good stuff on his channel. Great guy, and, uh, you know, he does a lot of interesting baseball stuff. He did some uh, replay baseball. He did some Stratomatic, Payoff Pitch. Uh, you name it, he does it on his channel. It's a beautiful Say Stadium, so here's all the different distances we need and what's going to end up happening based upon the distance. We'll get to that, though. All right, so that's kind of the overview. You're going to roll the dice. You're going to look at either the pitcher card or the batter card. You're going to look on the left and the right-handed splitters, you know, which, you know, on the left hand or the right-handed side, and you're going to get a result, and uh, you're going to use the charts to find out the results and errors and range plays and on deep flies and uh you know and then you're going to look at the charts on with runners on and you got a chart here if you want to try to advance uh we'll show you that in a little bit let's get going huh so uh let's look at the starting lineups let's do that first hey eh? let's do that oh and i need to do one other thing before i actually start so give me a second here i need to actually get the lineups information off the website this is of course historic lineups screenshot number five all right so we're going to have that up on our screen here all right here we go and i can zoom this way over there we go all right so you're going to have bernie williams for the new york yankees are in town or they're across the river and through the woods to see Grandma's house over in New York, Flushing Meadows, Shea Stadium. I'm, I'm not sure. It's Shea Stadium, anyways. So the Yankees are on the road. So Bernie Williams is going to be uh, your uh, center fielder. And, of course, you got uh, Derek Jeter. He's your shortstop. you got Gary Sheffield. He is your right fielder. you got Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, third base. Hideki Matsui, he's going to be your left fielder. Jorge Posada is your catcher. Tony Clark is your first baseman. 
Miguel Cairo is your second baseman. And pitching card number one for the pitcher today, Mike Messina. For the hometown Mets, for the hometown Mets, it's going to be Jose Reyes at second base. And this is interesting. Check this out. Kazudo Matsui. Yes, that's right. Kazudo Matsui facing off against Hideki Matsui. Kazudo Matsui is the shortstop for the um, New York Mets in this game. Then we have Mike Piazza, the catcher for the Mets. We have Cliff Floyd. He's a life left fielder. We got Richard Hidalgo. He is the right fielder. We got Shane Spencer. He's the center fielder. We got Ty Winningham with his Pittsburgh card because for some reason, even though he had more at bats with the Yankees, they put him on the Pittsburgh. They made him a Pittsburgh card. Uh, but Ty Winningham is your third baseman. <clears throat> Took me a little while to figure out where this card was. And then we have Eric Valent. Valent, Valent. He is going to be your first baseman and pitching card. Oops, where's pitching card? Here it is. Pitching card. Oops, wait a minute. Pitching card, here it is. Pitching, let's uh, put him in the back. And we got pitching card number six for the pitcher today, which happens to be Steve Traxel. So again, the important thing when you look at your pitchers, you can look at what situations. The Mets, Steve Traxel is a jam situation. For Mike Messina, situations, he's blank. So no situations for him. So he won't uh, adjust many plays until he becomes tired or something like that. You also become tired if you give up five runs in an outing as well. So Bernie Williams is up first. Bernie Williams is, you're down here, Bernie Williams. Actually, I got these upside down. That's why it's confusing me. I like the home team closer to me. The visitor team is away from me. Now, that's why I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So, Bernie Williams, he is going to be batting from the left-hand side since he's a both, he's a uh, switch hitter. So, he's going to bat left, and Mike Messina is a righty, and away we go with our first, very first play in Dynasty League Baseball. Woohoo! All right, again, it's red, white, blue. Red, 7, 1, 6, 7, 16. Versus a lefty. So versus a lefty, 716. We just roll down the list till we find 716. And it says soft ground ball to second base. So we're gonna it's gonna be a soft ground ball to second base. So it's gonna be a 4-3 put out for Bernie Williams. Soft grounder to second base. That of course is gonna be Jose Reyes over to Eric Valant. One out. 4-3, and that brings up Derek Jeter. Jeter is a righty, so we got righty-righty here. That's an 8-1-1, 8 righty, 8-11. 8-11 is going to be a... Uh, All right, so that is going to be a single... I just wanted to make sure. It's a single into center field. So, single into center for Derek Jeter. He's on with the single. So, a solid hit there by Derek Jeter. And if we actually show you the card here so you guys can see it. Eight, uh, what we roll? Eight, one, one. Yeah, that's probably a help. So, against the right-hander, eight, one, one is eight, ten to eight, thirty-three. You can see here it's a single into center field. And you can see the question mark there. The question mark means if we had a runner on first, he would go one base because it's a single. Or if we had a runner on second, he would move to third. The question mark means you can try to advance the runner an extra base if there's a question mark, basically. Um, what, that's what that means. Uh, so you can see here, if we look at this result here, a high fly ball out to left field. You can try to take the runner from third to home question mark. It's not an automatic. The question mark means you can attempt that if you want. So uh, with Derek Jeter on, he has a lead rating uh, to steal second of two. So not the greatest in the world. 
he does have a five steal. So if we look at our charts, because that's kind of important, right? Uh, let's see. We'll show you this. All right. So these little read ratings go from one to ten. Ten being the best, one being the worst. So he's only a, uh, what did we say he was? He was a two. So he's a two. Uh, so you can see he's down here. Then, of course, what we have to do is we have to look at the pitcher's hold rating, right? The pitcher's hold rating, in this case, Steve Traxel, he's a hold rating of C+. Plus. So we're going to find the 2 and the C+, plus if we were if uh, Derek Jeter decides to attempt. And we can see if we roll between 2 and 44, he got a good jump and he can attempt it. If he rolls at 45 to 87, he gets a poor lead and he must hold... If he rolls an 88 to 89, it's an error uh, on the possible error on the uh, pitcher's pickoff move. And then the 90 to 99 is a pickoff pitcher question mark, which means you probably roll to see if he gets picked off. So um, I think we'll just leave Derek Jeter on first for now. And we'll, you know, just kind of just to kind of give you, you know, when you see the numbers, is that, you know, is it too good? Is it too bad? You can see, you know, two is kind of on the lower end, one to ten on your lead ratings. Obviously, higher is better. And then your steal ratings go anywhere from minus three up to plus 14. So you want to get in the five, six, seven to have a pretty good chance. Anything higher than that is really good. Anything lower than that is pretty bad. You know, zero, one, two, three, four, five is not great. So just to give you a, you know, steal rating of five, is um, 4 to 54 is a stolen base, about 50% chance at a 5. Uh, and then, of course, you, there's other, you know, stolen base with the catcher error, uh, caught stealing, uh, possible collision, possible rundown. There's all kinds of different things that can come into play. But just, you know, 5 is about a 50% chance, give or take. And, of course, this number is going to be based upon your uh, steal rating, Yes, I'm going through this kind of slow for you guys. Oops, uh, what's putting up Jeter again? So uh, you get your hold rating to see if you get a good jump, a bad jump, or no jump. And then your steal rating is a 5. And that's going to be modified by two things. The, the uh, pitcher's um, ar uh, arm and the pitcher's hold rating. So again, uh, Steve Tranchel is a 0. And if we look at Piazza... He is actually a plus two. So Jeter would go from a five to a seven. If he, if he got a good jump, he would move up to about a seven. So it's definitely doable. It's up to you as the player to decide if you want to do it. But in this situation, we're just going to, we're just going to let him stand on first. Enjoy his time over there at first base with Gary Sheffield up. All right. Steve Traxel, Gary Sheffield. That is a 983, 983, and he's a right-hander, 983. So that's a 974 to 999. It's a ground ball out to third base, ground out to third. So we need to look at our charts here again. So we have a ground out. We have a runner at first, ground out, runner at first, runner forced out to second. If you had a hit and run on, then the runner goes to second base. Uh, so... This is your base running situation. So ground out, and you'll warn these pretty quickly on a ground out with a runner on first. He's forced at second. So uh, if you're familiar with Stratomatic, it's kind of like your B result there. So he's out on the fielder's choice, which is going to be a 5-4 put out. And he got on with the fielder's choice. So Sheffield's on at first. That brings up A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez. Two outs here in the top of the first inning, and we have the Yankees. 2004 versus the Mets. 2004. All right, here we go. And this is a game from July 2nd, 2004. All right. And our third roll is Alex Rodriguez. 239. 239 right hander. Two three nine, and that is a walk. Two o two to two fifty five is a walk for A Rod. So A Rod gets a free pass, and now there's runners at first and second. 
and there is two outs. And that is important because remember, do, 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 with Steve Traxel, whenever there's a runner in scoring position and there's two outs, he has the jam quality. So this comes into play now and we'll be using any jam results as opposed to the regular result uh, that comes up. And it doesn't matter if it's on the batter's card or the pitcher's card, it still comes into play. So it's not just jam on his card, it's on everything. All right. All right, so uh, Hideki Matsui's up. Two on, two away, top of first inning. That is a 7 1 3, and he's a lefty. 7 1 3. And that is, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, no, that's tired. Jam is going to be orange. Right, right, right. Okay. So it's a sound, uh, soft ground ball to second, and that's going to do it for three on the put out. So nothing across, and they had no hits. No hits, no runs, no errors. The Yankees go down in the first without scoring, and that brings out Mike Messina for the Yankees. He'll be facing off against Jose Reyes here. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Again, this is kind of a long introduction, but we're going to be playing a lot of Dynasty League on my channel now that I've got seven different seasons of it. I'm going to come up with some projects to use it on. We got six, we got 50, 57, 67, 71, 72, 74, 75, and the 2004 seasons, uh, all in um, Dynasty League. So Messina against uh, Jose Reyes here. Thanks to Rob, explanation point for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. We're in the bottom of the first, no score. Mets are up at bat. Three one five, and he is a right-hander. Three one five. Let's see if I can zoom this up just uh, slightly for you. Three one five, huh? That is going to be wow. He's got a Jose Reyes has got a huge ground out to short range. Two ninety four to four seventeen is a ground out to short. So that's going to be a six three put out. Jose Reyes will be out. And that brings up Kazuo Matsui. That's right, Kazuo Matsui against Mike Messina. Try and say that five times fast. <laughs> Seven four zero. He is a. He's going to be going left this time. Seven forty lefty. Seven forty. Uh, Seven forty. And that is going to be a strikeout. Messina's got a pretty good strikeout range. 693 to 862 is a strikeout. So a nice strikeout there by Messina. And we go out to Mike Piazza. It's like pizza, only better. Piazza. Piazza. 726. And I bet you that's going to be the same result, although he is a right-hander. And that is not going to be the same result. That is going to be a uh, ground ball to left field for a single. So Piazza with the single in the right field, and he's aboard. He's a 1-1-1 one, one, one across the board on both lead and steals, which kind of show you he had zero stolen base. He got caught zero times, so he's probably not going anywhere. Uh, but it is... It is the rule is the base rule is all runners are held at first base unless the defense chooses otherwise. So they're going to hold them just in case. That can come into play actually on some of the range plays, which we'll show you guys that in a little bit. Cliff Floyd, two outs, one on. And that is 878 against a lefty. 878. And against lefties, he's brutal. 878, though. That is going to be a single into center field. All right. So let's look at Mike Messina here. Uh, what was that number? That number was 878 versus lefties. So 878 is going to be a, a single into center field. And it has a question mark, which means all runners move one base. They can try for an extra base if they want to uh, to risk it. There's a chart for that. 
so in center field for the Yankees is going to be Bernie Williams. He's actually a plus three. Wow, that is not very good, actually. <laughs> a plus three. Uh, and your runner is Piazza. His base running is only a four. I think um, I think he'll just go to second on the single. Some runners at first and second, which would be a uh, clutch or jam situation if either the batter or the pitcher had a jam or the batter had the clutch, but neither one of these have it. And, of course, if they both had it, they, they simply cancel out one another. So we have Messina against Hidago. And two on, two away. Bottom of the first. Five. What is that? Five, five, two. Five, fifty-two. He is a righty. Five, five, two. And that's an infield range play. So this will be our first time to show you the infield range play. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right. So your infield range play here. So first thing you want to do is you always want to look at your batter and see he's a right pull. He's a right pull hitter. So we're going to roll the two dice. And we rolled an 11. Right pull and an 11 means it's a slow roller to short. So there's adjustments you can make if the fielder is playing in, if they're holding the runner on first base, uh, if the infielder's in is a slow roller. So in this case, uh, no adjustments there. Slow roller at a short stop. So we're going to look at our short stop here. And we're going to look at our range for the short stop. That's Jeter. He's a C plus. So we're going to look at, is it artificial turf or is it natural gas? Again, we went through this earlier, but in case you're just joining us, we're playing at Shea Stadium. Visibility is poor, foul territory is large, but it is a grass okay surface. So we're going to be looking at the grass section. So we're looking at C plus and we're looking at the uh, grass section. So that's going to be over on this side. So we're going to roll the dice again. And it was a, what was it? It was a slow roller, slow roller here. And that is a 99. 99, we just come over here, it says beats out infield single. So he's going to beat it out for an in, infield single and a one, which means all runners move one base. So Jeter can't get to it quick enough. And that's an infield single. So back to back to back singles. And the Mets have the bases loaded for Shane Spencer. But Shane Spencer only hit four home runs in the regular season. Now would be a great time if you're a Mets fan for him to jump on board and get that first one. So bases loaded two way here in the bottom of the first. Three singles in a row. That is a 169 versus a righty. 169. That is a... Long fly out to left field. If there was someone on third, they would go home. But with this the third out, it's not going to matter. As that is an F7. They get three hits, but no runs. And after one complete here at beautiful Shea Stadium, it is scoreless. All right. That brings up Jorge Pistana. And this game goes a lot faster. Uh, the more you play it, the more you remember how to do the charts and you're not explaining it to people and everything. So, all right, there's a 114 versus a righty. 114, and that is 111 to 115 versus a right hander. And you're actually going to go all the way across to go to foul question mark. So, we're going to look at the foul question mark chart. I remember we looked at uh, Shea Stadium, beautiful Shea Stadium. I'm going to keep saying that for my my good friend, Combat Painter. Uh, beautiful Shea Stadium is uh, foul, uh, foul territory is large. So we're just going to look at the foul territory and large section. We're going to roll two dice and we're going to get a number and find out if it's an out or what it happens to it. 
And we rolled a 36. 36 is a foul out to the catcher. So Piazza pops one up. Throwing off his mask is Pizza Man. Or Piazza Man. And that's going to be a pop-up to the catcher. Beautiful. That brings up Tony Clark. This 2004 season, guys. you got to love that. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, Tony Clark. Steve Trexel. Boom. Here we go. That is a 607. He's going to be going from coming from the left hand. 607. Lefty. And that's going to be an outfield range. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the infield range. We're going to do the outfield range the same way. All right. So uh, Tony Clark is a pole. And he's batted from the left side. So he's going to be left pole. So left pole. We're going to roll two dice. And we got a 62. Left pole, 62. Uh, we got to go to the outfield range, though. Left pull, 62, and that's a drive over the head of center field. Drive over the head of the center field. All right, so the center fielder for the Mets is going to be Spencer. He is a C plus, so we're going to be on natural gas natural gas how about natural grass and we're looking for the drive over the head c plus and we're going to roll the dice see what comes up that's a 17 so a c plus on grass drive over the head 0 to 36 over the shoulder catch so he's going to make the play uh, if there was a runner on third, he would go home. If there was a runner on second, he could try for third. But it was an over-the-shoulder catch by Spencer for the F8. Good play there by Spencer. And that brings up Miguel Cairo, the eighth man to bat for the Yankees. That is a 625, 625. He is a righty. 625. 625 is a hard grounder to short. 6-3. And that is nothing for the Yankees. And no hits for the Yankees. Thanks to some good defense. And we're through one and a half. Ty Winningham comes out against Mike Messina. 713. He's a right hander. 713. And that is a single in the left field. Well, they're finding all the right hits. 713 is a single in the left field. Uh, let's see. His uh, lead rating is a 2. Not very great. Um, Messina is actually a B. Plus. On his hold rating and a plus one when you, if you do get to steal you are a plus one against Messina but uh, Ty Winningham not the fleetest of foot Eric Valence Valence he is the first baseman 2 one one right-hander 2 2 one one and that is a walk so a walk. And we have runners at first and second. Nobody out. So maybe the pitcher's card here. And you know what time it is. Corners come in. As it looks like it's time for a little bunt action here. So Steve Traxel. Mm, bunting is an A. Let's take a look at the bunt chart, shall we? Error chart, bunt chart. All righty, he's an A bunter. Infield in, minus one to the bunt grade. So, uh, the red dice will tell you who fields it, and then the other two dice, percentile, nine, two, will tell you what happens with it. Uh, but infield being in gives you minus one. So it goes from an A to a B. We, of course, are on natural grass. 
grass, not gas, natural grass. So it goes to seven. Seven is the first baseman. And it's a 41, B41. It's going to be a sacrifice hit. 30 to 67. Simple sacrifice. And that is going to be a good sacrifice. So runners are going to move up on the sack. And runners are second and third. One away. That brings up Jose Reyes. Here we're in the bottom of the second. Reyes grounded to short his first time up. Double play could get him out of the inning, but they have, don't have anybody at first right now, so it's hard to get that double play. They're gonna play. Uh, they're gonna play corners in again here. They're gonna play corners in. So if we get an in result, we're gonna look at the in result. So basically, instead of a hard ground ball, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a single off the uh, card. If that's the result that comes up, so 241 to 252, if that number comes up, it's going to be a single. But it's an 8 1 0, 8 10. Uh, he's going to be a both, so he's going to be a lefty, 8 10 lefty. Mm, and that is a strikeout, big strikeout there by Mucina. So two away now, runners at second and third. And Kizo, Kazio Matsui is up. Uh oh. I got a 0 95. So we got a 95 versus a right hander 95. And that's going to be your error check. Error check. So time to look at the error chart. So we haven't looked at that yet. Let's look at the old error, error chart here, shall we? So again, this is going to tell you which position, right? So as an eight, eight is going to be center field. Center fielder is going to be Bernie Williams. He's a 90. So we find the 90 and we look at outfield here, 90, and we roll. And with a 90, we need a 4 to 99. He's going to, he's going to, foul, foul fly, what, uh, oh, short fly out, right, okay, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, wait a minute, what, um, Short fly out uh, with a 94 to 99. So it's got to be basically 0, 0 to 0, 3. Nope, it's going to be a fly out to center. F9, or F8, sorry. And that is one more hit, but nothing across. And after two complete, again, uh, just to kind of, I don't know if you guys want me to show you the charts a little bit closer or not, but. You're going to find your different position here. The red dice up here tells you, um, it tells you, you know, who fields it. And then you're going to find that position. Outfielders all have their own section. You're going to find their error number and just look at what, what you roll. And simple as that. So we're on to the third inning and the pitcher is up, Mike Messina. He is a, what is he? He throws right, but what does he bat? He bats, um, he's a left spray hitter, actually. He bats left-handed. Uh, that is a 1-6-0. So it's coming off the 160. That is a strikeout. He's got a, Obviously, batting card number one is the worst. It goes all the way up to batting card number 18. So one is the worst. You're going to strike out most of the time, which is kind of apropos since he's an American League having to DH. So he's probably only had a couple of bats all season. Or not DH, uh, to hit. That's what I meant to say. All right, everyone following along? Hopefully you are. So back up to the top of the lineup. Bernie Williams grounded his second his first time up. We're in the top of the third. 
That is a 5, 1, 2, 5, 12 against a lefty, 512, and that is bizarre question mark. All right, so we're going to the bizarre chart. A bizarre play happens. All right, and it's a double-paged bizarre chart. We'll see what happens. And that is a 383, 383, 383. 383 runner on first or runner on first to second with less than two outs ground out to short runner on first barrels into second to break up the double play check for injury all other situations it's just simply a ground out to short so uh six three on the put out all right that brings up Derek jeter who singled his first time up six four seven righty six Four, seven, high fly ball. That one's headed out there to right field. Hidego makes the catch. F9. And that is side retired. The Yankees go down in order. Second time in a row. They have actually only got one hit. They did get a hit. Derek Jeter got a hit. That's been one hit so far by, the, by uh, Steve Trexel. So, Mike Piazza's due up for the Mets. He singled his first time up. That is an 861 against a righty. 861. That's going to be another single into center field. So, Piazza, two for two. Again, he's 1-1-1 all the way across. No stolen bases. He's not going anywhere. They can put the old hit and run on, but his hit and run rating is F. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F. A being the best, F being the worst, so probably not. Cliff Floyd. 536, he is a lefty. 536 is umpire, question mark. So, umpire question mark all right so we're gonna roll that is a 93 93 says runners on go to the control chart below bases empty go to 25 to 32 which is this up here but uh, there are runners on we got piazza on first so the control chart is wild pitch rating and the pass ball rating. So wild pitch rating. Wild pitch rating for Mike Messina. Wild pitch is a C. So wild pitch is a C. And then for the catcher, uh, Pos Posada there. What's his um, Jorge Posada? We need his pass ball. He is a B. So you got a C rating. We have a C rating for the wild pitch, and we have a pass ball rating of B, so we're just going to cross-reference that chart and see what we roll. And we rolled a 16. 0 to 59 is a wild pitch, so that one's in the dirt. Gets by Posada, and scurrying over to second is going to be Piazza on the WP wild pitch. So he's in uh, second scoring position with nobody out here in the third inning. Cliff Floyd rolls a 9-1-7 versus a lefty 9-1-7. And that is a soft ground ball to first. Let's look at our little charts over here, shall we? All right, so we have a soft ground ball. We have a runner on second. Soft grounder, so runner to third. So Piazza makes it to third on the 4-3 put out. So Piazza in, in at third now for Richard Haldago. One out here in the bottom of the third inning. Still scoreless. 
994. He's a right hander. 994. And that's a soft grounder to third. Uh oh. Soft grounder to third. Runner scores. Infield in. Pitcher, pitcher or catcher. You have the option for the third base coach. Okay, so it was a, what was it? It was a 994 versus a righty. 994. Soft uh, gr uh, ground, I'm sorry, it's ground out to third. Sorry, ground out to third. Option for the third base coach. Hold the runner in third or wave the runner home. Defense is the option to throw out the uh, runner trying to score or try and go for the runner at home. Oh, at the batter safe at first. Go to the base runner advancement chart, infielder in, pitcher or catcher, runner holds. It was none of that. So if we go to the chart, is Piazza going to try and score is the question. That is a good question. Piazza. Oh, Piazza. He's been doing everything for the, the Mets so far. He's a run rating of four. Run rating of four. Uh, if there are two outs, which there are, you get to add one. So he's up to a five. Runner trying for third on a ball. No. Uh, hit and run. No. Infield in and trying to score. Uh, not with. Well, they might have been playing in. I didn't call it, so it's a little late to call it now, but. All right, so, uh, yeah, he's going to try and score, so defense is going to try and throw him out. So he's a four plus one is a five. No, wait, I'm sorry, he doesn't get the plus one because there's no, it's not two outs, duh. The only, so he's a four, let's see, uh, it's about a 40% chance. 46% chance with some error throws. Hmm. Now we got to try for it. What the hell? We're going to try and score here. They're going to try and get him at home. Here comes the play from third base. Alex Rodriguez, he goes home. Posada with the tag. Oh, hang on. Posada with the tag on Piazza. That's a 2-3. He's a 4 that is slides in safe. Others runners advance one base, but he is home safe. And so Hidalgo is on with the fielder's choice on first. So the Mets take a one nothing lead on Piazza. Single wild pitch advanced by Floyd and now ground out a grounder by Hidalgo. And he comes in just barely underneath the tag. And he gets in there safe. So one nothing Mets. Saint Spencer against Mike Messina. He rolled in 874. He's a right hander. 87 874. And that is gonna be a single again in the center field question mark. Uh Hidalgo, what is your speed there, Mr. Hidalgo? He's a base running of five. There's still only one out. So, does he stay? I think... Mm, single? Yeah, he's just going to stop at second. So runners at first and second now for Ty Winningham, who singled his first time up. One nothing Mets. Two men on, one out here in the bottom of the third. That is a 699 right hander, 699. And that's going to be a ground ball single into center field. Second goes to home. First, third question mark. So I should probably show you this one because. 
All right, this is kind of, could be a little confusing. So we rolled a, what did we roll? 690, 699, I think is what we rolled. First is a right-hander, so six, 699. So it's a single, ground ball into uh, single into center field. So uh, second comes home, and then first to third question mark, which means he can go third if he wants to risk it. Uh, or you can just stop at second. Uh, let me just double check that just to make sure, just to make sure. Bum, 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 Right. For example, if the base runner advancement was second to home, first to third question mark, a runner on second would come home to score and a runner on first would go to second and have the option to try for third by going to the base runner advancement chart. Okay. So coming in to score is Hidalgo on the single and Spencer. What's Spencer? St. Spencer, St. Spencer is a base running six, so he might actually go first to third on this. So uh, on the single, and uh, he's going to go. So it went to center field, and that is not his strength, as I recall. Bernie Williams is a plus three, so it's a five, six, seven, eight. So it's an eight, right? Now they have the chance to either throw them out. Uh, there's still only one out, right? Uh, yes, there's only one out. Um, so they have the choice to throw them. Or if they choose not to, they can use the cutoff play option. All right. So on the cutoff play, they roll a die. And are they going to try to throw him out? He would be five, six, seven, eight. He's got about a 75, 76, 77, maybe 78, 81 percent chance. So they're going to they're going to use the cutoff option. And that's a 31. So all trailing runners hold bases. So you can actually try to pick them off if they. So first to third goes Spencer on the single. By Winningham, we got runners at the corner. Still, only one out. And two runs in for the Mets. Two nothing Mets here in beautiful Shea Stadium. <laughs> I've got to say that. I love when Combat Painter says that. It's just awesome. So runners are first and third. Defense is going to play back. Go for the double play against Eric Valens. Valant, Valant, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Sorry, buddy. Don't be mad at me. 728. He's a lefty. 728. That is a strikeout. He does well against lefties. And that brings up the pitcher spot. So he's going to have to swing. He does use card number six with two way now. Two runs in. Runners at the corners. Winningham, let's look at Winningham's, what's his steal rating? Uh, Winningham, he's only a two to get the lead. Hmm, probably not. Trying to steal to get into position. All right, Trashel against Messina. That is a 424 against a right-hander. 424 strikes out a little bit higher. He would have had 5 to 455, would have been a single. So just missed it. 162 to 455, he struck out. But uh, so that is going to be one, two, three hits. And two runs across for the Mets, and they are up to. To nothing here after three complete we will move on all right steve traxel back out here in the top of the fourth he can face 30 batters he's only fast nine he's only faced 11 so far so 
he might be out there a while. Sheffield, he uh, hitting the fielder's choice first time up. That is a 0, 0, 007. That's about as little as you can get. So Sheffield versus a right-hander. 0 to 17 is going to be a line out to short. That's an L6. Line out to short. Alex Rodriguez. He walked his first time up. A rod here. And that is a 1 1 2 versus a righty. 1 1 2. That's a foul question mark. So again, the foul ball territory comes into play. We know that's a large. 21 is fouled into the stands. A rod gives a souvenir to the folks out there. One lucky folks with a green and yellow striped shirt out there. He gets another reprieve. That is a 487 right-hander. 487. He's going to ground it to short. 6-3. Two away. And brings up Masada. Hideki Masada. Masada. That is a 489, a righty 489. Uh, high fly ball. That one's carrying out there to center field. On the warning track is Shane Spencer. He's going to make the catch. Side retired. 1 2 3 for the Yankees again. And Steve Traxel, somehow, some way against his potent Yankee lineup, has one hit them through four innings. Derek Jeter with the only single so far. All right, top of the lineup here for Mike Messina. Bottom of four, two nothing Mets in beautiful Shea Stadium. <laughs> I, lo I love saying that. Jose Reyes, uh, eight one eight, eight one eight. Uh, he's a, gonna be a lefty. Eight one eight, eight one eight is a strikeout. Second strikeout for Jose Reyes. That brings up Kazadu Matsui. Kazuo Matsui. Kazuo Matsui. 324. Righty. 324. 324. And that again is going to be a single in the right field. Good lord. They find in all the right spots. Matsui with a single. He has got a lead of three. So you know what? Um, let's check out Messina is a B plus so what's a 3 and a B plus 3 and a B plus where is it there it is alright so 3 and a B plus he's got a 3 to 28 would be a good jump Poor jump with 29 to 86. Error on a pitcher pickoff. Yeah, you know what? He's 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 getting spunky here. He's gonna try it. Matsui. Kaduki Matsui. <laughs> 39. And that is gonna be a poor lead. Must hold until next batter. I'm going to get some of these charts. I'm going to take these charts into work and I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get some of them copied. Some of them you use a lot and I'll have them up so I won't have to flip through the book all the time. I think that's a good idea. So Matsui's got to stay at first. Piazza. Two for two with two singles. Mike Piazza. Nine, ten, nine, ten. Righty, nine, ten. 910 is a soft grounder to third. That we're going to have to look at. Soft grounder, I think, is going to be just a runner at first. Uh, soft grounder, mm, runner to second. Right. Okay. So, but so he's going to make it on the, and then it's going to be a 5 3 put out for Piazza. That is the second out. That brings up Cliff Floyd. This game can cruise 
If you're not commentating and you're not de debating and talking and doing everything. 389 righty. 389. And that is going to be a single into right field. So everyone moves up a base, but it has a question mark. So another single. And Matsui, what's your run rating, Matsui? He is an eight. He's a burner. Whew. Yeah, he's definitely coming home. Right field is going to be Sheffield. He's a minus two, so actually he's going to drop down to a six. But they're going to they're going to send him home. You got to throw him out if you want to throw him out, buddy. Matsui, here he comes. Are you throwing him or not? Are you going to use the cutoff play? Six, so you'd be an eight minus two, six. Huh? Yeah, we're going to try and throw him out. So here comes the throw from right fielder, Gary Sheffield with the cannon. Here comes the throw. It's on line. Oh, and I grabbed the wrong dice, which doesn't help. It's on line. 83 and a six. 83, 67 to 87. Gun down, other runners hold. So out at the plate is Matsui, and that is going to be the third out of the inning on the single by uh, Cliff Floyd, and we'll call that a, uh, what is that going to be, uh, right field is going to be a 9-2, so thrown out at the plate by Sheffield, he keeps this a two-run ball game. All right, we go to the top of the fifth, two nothing Mets. The Yankees have gone down in order in the fourth, and in order in the third, and in order in the second. The only inning they actually haven't is the first inning. Let's see if the Yankees can break out of their slump against Steve Trexel here in the fifth inning. As a five one eight versus a lefty five one eight. That is the old empire. Old empire. Fifty. Fifty. Runners on. Go to the control chart. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Runners on. Is there runners on? There is no runners on. Right. There's nobody. Uh, yeah, because that's the end of the inning there. So we're in the top of the fifth. Posada is up. There's nobody on. So it was go to 7 to 15. If pitcher is a wild pitch rating of D or F and runners on wild pitch, if not, refer to catcher's handling results below. So the catcher is Piazza. His handling rating is going to be, let's look at Piazza. Mm, he is a C. Piazza is a C handler. So let's look at the chart. So a C rating catcher and handling pitchers roll a die. Nope. Roll a die. One to three. It's going to be a line out to a line single into center field. At four to nine, it's going to be a pop up to the catcher in front of the plate. So four to nine is an out. Zero to three will be a good single, and that is a nine. He pops him up, popped him up high, high pop fly. Pisana P two, and look at that, Pisana. Both times he's up, he popped up to the catcher both times in different situations. I mean, in different, you know, it wasn't, it didn't come from the same play result. Uh, I think the first time he did a range play or something, and this time it was an umpire chart, so interesting. But he popped up to the catcher twice. It's the catcher popping up to the opposite catcher. <laughs> twice. Tony Clark. Zero, 48. 48 versus a righty. 48. Error chance. Okay. Error. Error. There's the error charts. All right, so the red die. Red die tells us position. That is going to be, oh, on the pitcher. 
So we're looking at the pitcher. That is Steve Traxel. He's got an error of 100. That means you need a 0 to 2 to get a result. Otherwise, it's going to be a ground out double play to the pitcher. 82. It's ground out. Uh, no one's on, so we don't have to worry about the double play check, but that's a 1-3. Quick snare of the bat. Uh, the ball there and out at first. And that brings up Miguel Cairo. He grounded his short his first time up. Oop, foul that one off. That one went in the seats. There was a lady in a pink dress out there that caught that one. That is a 2-2-9. 2, -two -nine. two -twenty -nine versus a righty. i got to slide the card over so I can actually see it. 2-29 strikes out. And that's going to do it. Another 1-2-3 inning for the Yankees. Whew. I thought the Yankees, with the lineup they had, was going to smoke this one. But that's why they play the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they play the game. So a day goes up here in the bottom of the fifth. Still 2 nothing Mets. That's a 4-30. Right-hander, 4-30 is a line drive. That one's going to fall in front of the left fielder for another single. Hidego, he's a 2 to lead, 1 to steal. Not very good. Man, we're just going to... Yeah. <sighs> nothing. All right, St. Spencer... Flew out to left and singled his first time, second time up. One for two. He's a C in the hit and run. So we're just going to let it go normal and see what comes up. Two, one, seven. Two, one, seven versus a righty. Two, one, seven is a walk. So another costly walk by Messina. And first and second, nobody out. Ty, Ty Winnington, he's a D uh, bunter, or uh, yeah, buntering or hitting running. He's he's just D. He's just a D man. So, um, hmm, hmm, yeah, hmm, hmm. That's a eight one zero oh, eight ten righty eight ten. Uh-oh. All right, so here's our first try to chart time. 810 is a deep drive question mark. All right, so Ty Winningham, he's a right spray hitter. A right spray hitter. And his power is a B power. Versus right-handers. So if we look at Ty Winningham here. We didn't actually show you that earlier. But against right-handers, it gives you their batting average and then their power rating. So he's a 272 with a B. Against lefties, he's 222 with a B. So he's a B power. So we're going to come to our charts that we looked at earlier. Shea Stadium. And here's our charts. So first thing we got to do. Ty Winningham is a right spray. So we're going to roll to find out where it's going. Right spray. So we're going to look at right spray. And that is a 29. So 29 says left field. He pulled that one into left field. In left field. Look at Shea Stadium here. Left field. It's 255. I'm sorry, 355. Yes, learn how to read. 355 is what he needs for distance. He is a B, and we know he needs a 355. So you look down, 355. That is higher than 50, 53 or higher. That one is gone. Now remember, here's the thing. We have no win, but remember it's a cold night, so we lose five feet. And we also lose five feet because of how well the ball carries at Shea Stadium, minus five. So he lose 10 feet. So instead of hitting 355, he's got to hit 365. So he's got to roll at least 61. And Ty Winningham is going to have himself a three-run home run. 
This one's headed out deep. It is going back to the wall in left field. Hideki Matsui, 23. So 23 shows us how far it was hit. It's 320. We subtract the 10 feet. It goes 310 feet. We know it's not a home run, but we look at 310 feet to left field. 310 feet. And we find out what that does. So 300 to 335 is a long flyout. If there was a runner at third, he can go home. And if there's a runner at second, he can try to tag up. So Hidego is on second. He can try if he wants because it was hit deep enough. Hidego again for us uh, invalids that can't write down the speed ratings of the runners. He's a five. The left fielder, Matsui, is a plus one. So that would take him to a six. And I'm not sure if there's anything for the long fly. Let's look at our chart, shall we? I don't see any modifier for the long fly out. So it'd just be a simple five plus one, six. So sixty about a sixty percent chance, give or take. There's a few error that you know, controversial plays, collision rundown. I mean it could go either way on those. About a sixty percent chance. Do you send them? Nobody out. Well, the one out because of the fly ball out. To Winningham. Too bad he didn't get the home run. We could have used a three-run home run here in beautiful Shea Stadium for Combat Painter and his beautiful Mets. Uh, you, Sixty. You know what? He's going to go. He's going to try and make it. Uh, actually, wait a minute. No. The, here's the other thing. There is adjustment on this because uh, trying for third on a ball hit to it went to Matsui and left field is a minus two. So it's going to take him from a six to a four. So he's not going to go because it went to left field. If it went to right field, he would get a plus two. So, yeah, he's going to stay on the fly ball out to left field. Ty Winningham came close, but just not close enough. That brings up Eric Valent or Valant or Valent. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. He's mad at me already. So he's going to walk in a strikeout. Two men on. One out. As a 4-5-5. And he's up against the righty. 4-55. That's a ground out to first. Ground out to first. We're going to have to look at our chart. This see if this is uh, what this is here. So we have runners at first and second. Runner on first, forced out his second. Runner on second goes to third. Hit the ball, is hit to third. No, it wasn't. If there was a hit and run, no, there wasn't. Okay. So it's uh, basically a fielder's choice at get the, the runner at. Uh, so it's going to be a 3 6 to get the runner at second. So we got runners at the corners again on the fielder's choice. And once again, second time the pitcher has come up with runners on the corners. Wow. But you don't want to take out uh, Traxel. Traxel? Traxel. You don't want to take him out because he's he's one, two, three the Yankees the last four innings. He's got to swing. He's got to hit it. He's got to get something. Come on. Do it. One, 30, five, righty. And he's done it. That's a ground ball single into center field. Everyone advances one base. You can try for two if you want. So Hidego comes in on the single. Hashtag pitchers can hit. Hashtag remove the DH. Hashtag whatever you want to put in there. Uh, so Valent, what's your, what's your run rating? You are a five. You went to center field, so there won't be any adjustment. It'd just be a straight five. Hmm. I think we'll just leave uh, runners at first and second and bring up the top of the lineup. 
That's Jose Reyes. Another run in for the Mets as they're up now three to nothing here in beautiful Shea Stadium. <laughs> Traxel with the big RBI single. Valent Moose is second, and there are two away. Messina trying to get out of the fifth. 372. And he's a right hander. 372. And is a ground ball to short. That is a 6-3. We'll just call that a 6-4, 6-3. It doesn't matter. But that is the end of the inning. But the Mets pick up two hits, one run. They also picked up two hits in this inning as well. They got caught at the plate. They've had quite a few hits. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've had 11 hits. The Yankees have had zero, zero, zero. So they've had a total of one hit. What a difference. Wow. And that is Mike Messina is due up. Is he coming out for the sixth inning? I mean, he isn't pitching horrible. He's only down three runs, but... Do you give up the pitcher so you can bring in a pinch hitter? He can go, uh, Messina can go, Messina can go 30 plus. He's gone through 9, 18. He's gone through actually 28 already. Wow. Wow. 9, 18, 27, 28. So he's got, yeah, I think you got to pull him. So Messina out. They're pulling Messina. And the New York Yankees, That would, they would be the American League team. I'm bringing in a pinch hitter, I think, here. And with the right-handed Trexel up. They want somebody they can hit pretty decent against right-handers. These are all pitchers. We don't need those guys. All right, so let's just put the pitchers in a different pile. Won't need those guys. Hmm. It's going to be uh, Ruben Sierra. Ruben Sierra is going to come in and pinch it. Uh, so put the Yankee batters over there. So Sierra is coming into the sixth inning. All right. So Ruben Sierra comes in for the Yankees to face off against Steve Traxel. He is a switch hitter. That is a 93. That's an error check. That's going to be an error check. So it could be good, could be bad. We shall see. I have to get my error chart out here. There we go. All right. So the red dice will tell us the position. That is going to be zero. What is zero? Ground out. Zero is just no error. It's just a ground now. Ground out. Uh, two out. First is empty. Hit and run. Infielder in. All other situations. Roll a die. Oh, wait a minute. Error position, zero. Ground out pitcher, question mark. Ground out double play. I don't see even that. Hmm. Error. Zero. Ground out pitcher, question mark.
That's a little interesting. So one, if you roll one, that's the pitcher. If you roll a zero ground out pitcher, and then in parentheses it says question mark. And I'm looking on the charts to see, because I've never come across that, but I'm just assuming it's a ground out to the, zero would be a ground out to the pitcher. The question mark must mean runner advancement, but then you would look at your results, ground out double play, field conditions, field conditions, lighting, wind, error on a force play, or there's a different positions. So do you roll under the pitcher spot? But there's already one for the pitcher. Uh, trash soul, remember, is a hundred. Well, we'll roll it just in case. I'm not sure how to handle that yet. 24, it's going to be a ground out possible double play, but we don't have to worry about that because there's no one on. So it's going to be a 1 3 ground out by Ruben Sierra, which not sure where his card went. Here it is. So we can pull him out, and there is one out now for the Yankees. Bernie Williams, the Yankees better get set, something started here. Better get something started. Oh, you're going to be out in this game before you know it. Hammer time. I like your baseball takes usually jester, but DH rules need to be expanded. Go Twins. <laughs> I much much your stuff in replay. All right, Hammer time. We can agree to disagree. I don't mind. I don't mind you being wrong. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I do. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate your comment, too. All righty. 842. 842. And what are we doing? What are we doing? What is he doing? He's a lefty. 842 lefty. That's a bad number, I think. 842. That's a soft grounder first. And that is a one to th or three to one. We'll call that a three one put out. The Yankees haven't even got anything out of the infield in forever. That's a ground to the pitcher, grounder first, a strikeout, a grounder to the pitcher, a pop up to the catcher, a fly ball to center, a grounded or short, a liner to short, a strikeout, a fly ball to left, and a grounder to short. They got two balls. Out of the infield in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth innings so far. That, jeez. Derek Jeter, the only Yankee with a hit so far. 8 0 9. He's a righty. 8 0 9, and that is a strikeout. And that's exactly what he needed. 759 to 8 0 9 is a strikeout. Otherwise, it would have been a single. 8 0 9 is a strikeout instead of a single. And the Yankees go down one, two, three again. And Traxel, who can go through 30 batters, has only gone 18, 19, he's only gone 20 batters through six innings. That is, wow, crazy. I see who the Yankees are going to bring in. They're going to bring in, uh, let's see, Yankees pitching is back here somewhere, right here. They're going to bring in, let's see who they have. All right, they're going to bring in Brett Prinz, B-R-E-T, P-R-I-N-Z, Prinz is coming in in the sixth inning, Prinz against Kazuto uh, Matsui, try and say that five times, good lord. Hey, Glenn, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming by. One of my favorite baseball games, Go Dynasty. All right. I got seven seasons, seven seasons I just got. So we'll be playing a lot of Dynasty 
A lot of projects coming up with Dynasty League Baseball. The Yankees are, uh, whew, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. So, let's see, five of the six innings, are, they've only got one hit, so. Steve Traxel, whoo. Matsui, this is Kazuo Matsui, though, not Hideko Matsui. That is a 6 9 3, and he's going to be lefty. 6 93, and that is a strikeout for Prinz. He's got a huge strikeout range. 6 9, uh, 689 to 832. That's a Pretty big range there. So Matsui's out. That brings up Piazza. Two for three and scored a run. Mike Piazza. That is a 55, 0 55 against the right hander. 55 is an error check. Error check. Hey, uh, Glenn, don't mind me asking you, on the error, on the error check, when you roll a zero, it says ground out pitcher, and then in parentheses, question mark, for a zero, and then if you roll a one, right, if you roll a zero, right, on the red dice, if you roll a zero on the red dice, let's see if we can do that, right, it's a ground out pitcher, and then in parentheses, question mark. And if you roll a one, right, you look at the pitcher position. So what is the zero one? Is that just an automatic ground out to the pitcher? Good question, eh? It's a one three? Okay. I kind of, I was looking for something, but I didn't see anything that went with that. So I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, oh, 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 that dice went crazy. All right, position is eight, so that's going to be center field. That is, who is that? That is um, center field, Bernie Williams. He's a 90, so outfield 90, and we need a four or higher. I'll make the play. That's a 60. That's going to be a F8. Thank you. Learn how to F8. So two away. Cliff Floyd is up. One is a pitcher error check. Zero is go to the pitcher. So, let me just, you said one is a pitcher error check, right? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I understand what those are. Zero is go to the pitcher. So, is that, it's not a pitcher check. It's just simply a ground out to the pitcher. Ground out to the pitcher. Okay, that's what I was thinking. All right, Cliff Floyd is up. He's two for three with two singles himself. 326, right hander, 326, strikes out, and that's two strikeouts for Brett Preeze. And we got no score there. We go to the seventh inning. Steve Traxel still pitching a whale of a game. And due up is not Derek Jeter. It will be Gary Sheffield. Sheffield's up. That is a 2-3-3 righty, 2-33 walks. So Sheffield walks. And a man is on for the Yankees. Sheffield, not much of a threat to steal. I bring it up A Rod. A walk and a grounder to short. Uh oh, 426 righty. 426 is a hard grounder to second, and that is going to be a 463 double play. Hideki Matsui. We've got two Matsuis in this game. One is Hideki. One plays for the Yankees, one plays for the Mets. 
770 lefty 770 strikes him out in another one two three inning we're stretching everyone stretch I'm actually gonna get a drink here thank you thank you for being patient I am correct says Glenn so that is good to hear we're gonna be doing a lot of Dynasty League on my channel. I got the 57, I'm, uh, let's see, wait, this is uh, 67 season. I got the 57 season, 1957 season. I got the 1971 season, 1972 season, 1974 season, 1975 season, and the 2004 season. So, I, I picked these up off of somebody that was selling them, and uh, so, Hidango, he is two for three, scored two runs so far for the Mets. Two of the three Mets runs have come off of Hidango. That is a 5.05. Uh oh, another bizarre play. Hammer time. Past my bedtime. I better go. All right, hammer time. See you, man. Thanks for coming by. Bizarre. Bizarro play. That's a 4.24. 4.24. Four, High fly to shallow left field. Crowd noise prevents left fielder and shortstop from hearing one another as the ball for the hear one another call for the ball and they ram into one another. Batter credited with a double all run score. Check for injuries. Oh my god. Uh, that is a double bizarro double by Richard Hidalgo, and it doesn't get any worse for the Yankees. They're colliding with one another. I'm not going to do injuries. Wow. That is going to be, uh, let's see, was that short? Who was the, who was that 424? Who was that that collided with one another? Uh, Glenn says, great seasons. I'm a 60s and 70s guy. 460, 424, I think it was, yeah. So there's a high fly to shallow right field. The right fielder in second base, I think. Or was it the... No, it was, it was to left field. Right, right, right. So it was the shortstop and the left fielder. So that's Jeter and Matsui rammed into one another. They fall down. The ball falls in for a double. And it doesn't get much worse for the Yankees here. Well... And it brings up Spencer, who is one one for two with a walk as well. That is a 169 versus a righty. 169. That's going to be a ground ball into left field. Second to home. And there is no runner at first, so we don't have to worry about that. But the RBI single... As Hidego comes home once again on the single by Shane Spencer. Spencer is only a one to get the lead. So, uh, let's see. Uh, he's a B plus. So, Spencer's not going to try to steal anything. Ty Winningham had a deep fly earlier. Just couldn't get it up far enough. Only hit it, uh, I think it was 300 and, let's see, if I recall correctly, he hit it uh, 310 feet. Yeah, that's what he ended up hitting. It was 310 feet. Not deep enough, though. All right, so it's now a 4 nothing ball game. Ty Winningham just missed that home run. He does have B power, too, so unfortunate.
Just didn't get enough of it. Love the bizarro place is Glenn. Yeah, they seem pretty good. Can you guys see the dice okay? All right. That is a 989 versus a righty. 989. 989. It's ground out to third. With the runner at first. That's going to be a 3 4 put out at second. And throw to first. Not in time. Winning hand gets in there in time. Stays out of the double play. Now, Winningham, what's his steal? Um, gee, not very good. Eric Valant, Valant. Valant is walk, strike out, and hit into a fielder's choice in the fifth. 8-27, lefty. 8-27, strikes him out. And that is going to do it. But the Mets put up one more run here in beautiful Shea Stadium. <laughs> it is a four to nothing ball game. The Yankees have done nothing, absolutely, positively nothing against Steve Traxel, who can face 30 batters. We are now in the eighth inning. He's faced 9, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 batters. He isn't even through the batting order three times. That's how good he's pitched. Jorge Posada. 793, and he's going to be lefty. 793, and that is going to be a single. Just as I say that, that is a single to center field. The second hit for the Yankees. Posada is aboard, and here comes the Yankees. All right, Tony. Whoop, come back here, Dice. Tony Clark is up. That is a 699. He's also lefty. 699. And that is a ground ball into left field through the left side. And could advance, could advance first to third. Uh, Posada is a running of three. I don't think he's going anywhere. So so back-to-back -back singles. And the Yankees have got something going here. Miguel Cairo, the eighth man. Eighth Eighth hitter against Traxel, who's given up more hits in this inning than he's given up all game. Is it time to pull him is the question. Is he getting tired? We'll find out after this swing. That is a 648. 648 against a righty. 648. And that is a high fly to right. Third to home question mark, which we don't have to worry about because there's no one on third. So that is to right field. So one away. That brings up the pitcher spot. So Prince is out. And they're going to bring in another pinch hitter. The Yankees are going to bring in a pinch hitter. And that happens to be... Good question. Who is that going to be? With the righty up. Hmm. It's going to be Kenny Lofton. Speedster, Kenny Lofton. It's coming in. Kenny. It's coming in in the eighth. Kenny Lofton. Two men on. He's got a pretty good average against right-handers. He bets left-handed. So let's see how he does against Steve Traxel. That is a 189 righty. 189. That is a long fly out to center field. Runner at third goes home. And runner at second can try to go to third. Again, I don't know if you want to. That is to, what is it? Long fly to center. F8. Hmm. Second to third. Again, it's Posada. Posada. He's not very good. Posada is not very, very fast afoot. Although it was, well, it's hit to center field, so. 
So two on, we're going to give uh, Bernie Williams a shot at it. Bernie Williams did hit 22 home runs. He can make things very interesting with one swing of the bat here against Steve Trexel. That is a 307 righty. 307, and he strikes out to end the inning. So the Yankees get two hits but cannot do anything with them. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Yankees need to bring in a new pitcher. And that is going to be Paul Quintrell. So Quintrell is coming in to pitch for the Yankees. Paul. And that is the eighth inning. Paul Quintrell. And Steve Traxel is going to be done. He gets a big round of applause from the hometown crowd as he heads to the dugout and tips his cap to the fans as he is now going to be done. The Mets are going to be bringing in a pinch hitter. So once again, I don't need all the pitchers. We'll put the pitcher cards somewhere else for now. I'm going to get a pitcher out here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's bring in Jose Parra, if I can find his card. Uh Really, all these cards, and none of them is Jose Barra? You've got to be kidding me. Looking through the cards. <sighs> Let's look at Jose Parra. Why would he not have a card? In 2002, 2004, uh, I guess he was only in 13 games. So this is one of the 13 games he played in. Unfortunately, we don't have his card, so he's not playing in my game. So we'll go to backup number two, which is Orber Morano. We'll get to him in a minute, but we do need to find, first find a pinch hitter. Ah. Uh, they have Paul Quintrell in there, huh? The Mets. All right, they're going to bring in... Trying to find a good, good, <sighs> trying to find somebody that actually played in the game would be nice, Todd Zeal. All right, it's going to be Todd Zeal. Screw it. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to mess around anymore. Let's just do this. So Todd Zeal. Come on. Now the pen won't work. Come on. Todd Zeal. He's coming in in the eighth. All right. So Todd Zeal against Paul Quintrell. Two. 
75, righty, 2, 7, 5 strikes out. So all that for a freaking strikeout. All right, Todd. Goodbye, Todd. And that will bring up Jose Reyes. Jose, two ground balls to short and two strikeouts. Six ninety three lefty six ninety three, and that's going to be a ground ball single into center field. So there he gets a single. Jose Reyes, he's a B plus. He's a two. You know what? We have not tried a steal yet, so we're. We're going to try one just because. Why not? All right, he's a B plus, and he's a 2. Not a great chance, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to try, right? Uh-oh, 60. Maybe <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have. Uh, what is he again? He's a B plus, right. B plus, 2, 60. Poor lead. Runner must hold until next batter. Okay. It's not, not the end of the world. He didn't get caught. Nothing crazy happened. Kazuo Matsui. <clears throat> Kazuo Matsui. Five sixty-two. Uh, he's going to be a boat, so it's going to be a lefty. Five sixty-two. Infield range. This is only the second infield range play we've had all game. We've only done it one other time for you guys, so if you were still wondering how we do these infield range plays. So first thing is, you look at Matsui. He's batting left, and he's a spray hitter. So left spray. So you find the left spray. And it's a 17, and that happens to be a smash up the middle. P to the pitcher. Smash up the middle to the pitcher. Pitcher is a range of C on natural grass and a C and a smash up the middle. A C rating is right there. That's a 51. And a 51 is a special one because there's only one number, 51, and we got the special. So if you look over here, off glove infield single. Everyone moves up a base. Wow. On the 51, we rolled a 51. That is the only number. It's a off-the-glove infield single. Wow. Everyone moves up a base on the single by Matsui. Off the glove of Paul Quintrell. Unbelievable. The Yankees have had that happen to them all game long. I feel bad for the Yankee fans. That brings up Piazza. Runners are first and second. Mm, one out. Piazza. He's got B power against the right-handers. If he can get a hold of one. That is an 894 righty. 894. It's a high fly to left field. Third can go home if they want, but we don't have to worry about that. And that's a fly ball to right. That brings up Cliff Floyd, two-way here in the bottom of the eighth. That's a three, 58. Righty, three, five, eight. Strikes him out, and that will, wait, yes, that will be the third out. One, two, three. Okay, so two more hits. Uh, two hits in there, two hits there, and no hits there. Okay. So you're on the top of the ninth, and coming in is going to be our main man here, Orber Moraro. He's coming in the ninth to try and close this out. Yankees down four to nothing. Two hits. No, I'm sorry, three hits so far. Derek Jeter has one of the hits. Let's see what he can do against Orber. 484, righty, 484, high fly ball, that one's headed out to center field, back to warning track is Spencer and makes the catch, F8, one out, Gary Sheffield, 
He is 0 for 2 with the walk. That's a 5-5-4. He's a righty. 5-54. Five, and again, well, we have back-to-back -back, uh, <laughs> after not having them all game except for one time. We now have another infield range play. He is Sheffield, right pull. He's a right puller. 42, right pull, right pull, 42. It's a hot liner to third base. Third base is Winnington. He's a C plus on grass. And we have a hot liner, a C plus. Zero to 55, he's going to get it. And that is a zero one. He grabs that no problem and guns him out at first. Great play there by Ty Winningham. Sheffield out, and the Yankees are down to their last out. Alex Rodriguez walked in the first and then grounded to short and grounded to second. Oh, for two with a walk. A rod. Five five five. That's an easy number to read. Five fifty five. And once again, we got another infield range play. Three, almost three in a row. And a rod is a right spray. Right sprayer. Ninety six. Right spray. And that is drilled down the line to third. Again, third base. Two times in a row. Wilmington C plus. Uh, smash down the line, or drill down the line, drill down the line, C+, plus. here is what we need, 0 to 55, he's going to stop it, well, 0 to 55, the game is over, well, twice in a row, can't get him in the hole, one more time, 0 to 55, this game is over, 46, and Ty Winningham, two great defensive plays, two highlight plays to end this one. Yankees go down to the Mets, four to nothing, no runs. They had no hits there. They had a total of three hits, and I don't think anybody had an error. So no runs, three hits, no errors. The Mets, four runs. They had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen hits, four runs and fifteen hits and no errors. So the Mets certainly uh, they had a runner thrown out at the plate, and where else? They had bases loaded. They had bases loaded, and they also had first and third with two outs, two times up with the pitcher. With the pitcher, Steve Traxel up. And it's hard. But Traxel did get a single, RBI single in this fifth. So, there you go. That is a look at Dynasty League Baseball. Dynasty League Baseball for you guys out there. If you're interested. Uh, very similar to what we were doing with Internet Baseball League. Different systems, but based upon the same core system, so you can see how everything is kind of similar, yet also different. Um, let's see, pitchers go over here. Yankee pitchers go here. All right, Yankee pitchers go here. Yankee batters. And Yankee pitchers. And batters go over here. All right, so there we go. There's Dynasty League for you. Great game, says uh, Glenn. Thank you, my friend. And Al, Red Sox fan, wonderful channel. Check out Al, Red Sox fan, his wonderful channel. And also, guys, don't forget, tomorrow night around 8 o'clock, we're going to be having our end of May baseball review show with... Um, with our good friend Retro Sports Network, uh, baseball demos, and sports time machines. So be sure to come in around 8 o'clock. We're going to run it after um, Ron gets done with his his uh, show on his channel. When he's done with that, then we're going to run our thing. So around 8 o'clock tomorrow, 
are we talking about what happened in the baseball season 2019? What happened in May? And talk to all of our players out there and uh, get to check, uh, you know, get to hear of what their opinions are, their thoughts, and uh, see how the th- season going, specifically talking about what's happened in May. So looking forward to everyone that's out there. Uh, is a game that didn't get the credit to deserve. It's a game that didn't get the credit it deserves. It's a game that doesn't get the credit it deserves. Yeah, I mean, I've been wanting to get this for a while. It's just expensive as hell to get into. Uh, I came across someone that was selling a bunch of seasons, so he gave me a package deal. I got them for a pretty good price. Uh, Al, Red Sox fan, will love this. I got the you know 1967 season. I got the 1957 season. I got the 71, 72, 74, 75, and the 2004 seasons. Because that's what he had for sale. So <laughs> that's why I got these seasons. All right, guys. Well, we'll have plenty more Dynasty League. I've got plenty of seasons to come up with some projects. I think the game is really good. I just This episode went really long because I wanted to explain what all the numbers and the different ratings on the cards were and all that stuff. So hopefully we'll see everyone very, very soon. Thanks to Al Red Sox fan Glenn, my good friend Glenn, for coming by. Hammer Time come, came by for a while there. Rob Explanation Point was here for a while. And everyone else that came by, I do appreciate it. This is just a preview tutorial to show you how it plays and, uh, you know, kind of show you the charts and, uh, you know, the different ballpark cards, what the different numbers mean and, and how you'd run different checks and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, after we do a couple games, I'm not going to be going through these charts with everyone. And I'm going to tell them to come back and look at this video so they can watch and see how everything's done. But I think we did we did some infield range plays. We did some outfield range plays. We tried to steal. Um, let's see. I don't... Did we have anybody bunt? I don't... Yeah, we had a pitcher bunt once. We did the foul territory stuff. We did the umpire stuff. We did the base runner advancement stuff. We did the control charts. And we did the error charts. So I think, and the range charts. So I think we did everything. We covered everything that we needed to cover to kind of show you how the different plays work. And that's uh, that's all I wanted to do really in this video and kind of just show people. I think it's a really good uh, system. Uh, you know, it needs more, it needs more uh, people playing it. And uh, now we got the cards to play it. So thanks everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow around eight o'clock here on my channel. We're going to talk baseball 2019 May review with sports time machine, baseball demos and uh, retro sports network and whoever else I can get on my channel. <laughs> we'll see you all then till then have a good night. Thanks for watching guys.